Hey everybody, in this next video I'm going to be making the doors to the DVD cabinet. I do mess up on the design in the beginning, but in the end it all turns out okay. I hope you enjoy these videos. If you do, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks a lot. I'm here in my garage and going to get started on the DVD cabinet. You'll see that I've got my wood all set up. I've got my table saw set up and I'll give a, a little overview of the area that I'm going to be working in. Um, if you're like me and you don't have a big space for a workshop, you're just kind of working out of the garage. I pulled my car out and I'm working in one of the bays here. So I'll give a look as to what we're going to be doing and then give a step-by-step -step along the way as we go. So here is the wood that I picked up from Home Depot. There's the piece of plywood, very, very thin plywood that I have here that I'm going to be using for the front of the door and the back of the unit. Um, I'm just sitting here in my garage, so that's my little workbench over there in the corner. And then here is the table saw that I'm going to be using. And we're going to be getting started on the door here. This is the door that came off of the DVD cabinet. And if I flip it over, you can see here that there are pieces for the shelves. And it came off right here on the joint. And that joint is the same width as the shelf unit there. So we're going to be cutting the piece of door there as well. Now, this uses dowels, and you can see the the spots where it joins in. It's doing the same thing on these, and we're going to use a little bit of a rabbit cut here instead, instead of the uh, instead of the dowels. So the first thing that I'm going to do is cut these long pieces right here. Cut those to size because those are the longest boards I need. I need to make sure that I've got the wood for that and that I'm not going to be splitting a piece of wood into two pieces. I'm going to skip this middle section for now because I'm not even sure that I'm going to be using that. I may just end up having a panel going all the way across. That's 41 and 3 quarters. Another thing that I want to be careful of is making sure that I'm not just marking all of my board at the same time. Because of the width of the saw blade, if I do that, each board is going to end up being a little bit smaller than the next one. And so because I don't want that, I'm going to be cutting each piece one at a time and then remeasuring and then cutting the next piece. All right, the final thing that I'm doing with those boards that I just cut is lining them all up at the ends to make sure that they are all exactly the same size and the same cut. You can see that these are flush and they're flush on the other side as well, so we're good. Now before we begin cutting our cross pieces, we wanna do a little bit of thinking about the type of joint that we want on our door. As you can see, the original door just has a flat joint and they did that because they drilled dowels in through and they're securing it that way. I'm not going to be doing that because I don't want to drill a bunch of holes in the end of the wood. It can split and it's kind of difficult to do. So what I'm going to be doing is creating a rabbit joint across here. As you can imagine as you pull the handle here there's going to be stress pulling out on this joint and the joint on the bottom. So what we're going to do instead of a flat butt joint here we're going to extend this out so that the cross piece is a little bit longer than the end piece. And we're going to join them together about halfway through the width of the board. As we measure this door, we can see that the door is 13 and 7 eighths inches across. We want to make sure that we keep that width of the door when we're doing these calculations. The boards themselves are two and a half inches wide, so that's going to make five inches of our 13 and 7 eighths. Now we just measured 
that the boards themselves are two and a half inches wide. So since we have one board on either side of the door, that's five inches. However, because we're cutting this cross piece in one inch, that's two inches less. So five inches becomes three inches. So the width of those side pieces is going to take away three inches of our 13 and 7 eighths inches, which means that our cross piece needs to be 10 inches and 7 eighths. What we're going to be doing now is a dado blade cut. I'm going to be using a dado blade, but this can be done with a single blade as well. We're going to be taking these pieces, both the cross piece and the door edge pieces, and we're going to be cutting into them. And what we want to do is for these cross pieces, we're going to cut in about halfway right here so that we make this piece a little bit skinnier. And then we're going to cut only in about an inch in this direction. So we're going to end up with a piece that looks like an L. It's going to have halfway through here cut down like this. Now you could do this with a single blade just cutting through here and then flipping it up and cutting that direction. But I'm going to do it with a dado blade and it'll look a little different but the end result will be the same. Okay, now it's time to set up our dado blade with the right measurements to make sure that we get the right depth and the right width of that rabbit cut that we're going to make. So I'm going to show how I'm doing that and we'll take it step by step. So I have my dado blade set up here and I've made a mark on my board that's halfway down on the board. This board is three quarters of an inch thick, which means half of that is three eighths of an inch. So what I've done is I have marked uh, a mark right here for 3 eighths of an inch, and that's how deep we want our dado blade to go. So I'm going to set this up right next to the blade there, and we're going to adjust the height of the blade down so that it is down to that mark. And I want it to be a little bit slightly below that mark there. So as you can see, the blade here is hitting that mark, the high part of the blade. We want to make sure that the highest blade that we have doesn't go any higher than that mark right there. And you can see right here, that's going up a little bit above. And I want to make sure that it's below, like that right there. That way, when I make the cut, it's going to be exactly where I want it. And you can see here that it's spinning okay. So that's the depth that I want for my blade. Now we're going to go for the width. So we don't want to cut our board all the way in here. That would be a big problem. Like I said, I wanted to go one inch in. So I'm going to take my measurement and I'm going to take this guard here and we're going to make sure that this side of the blade is one inch out. So we're taking the measurement here we're looking at the measurement here, and we're pushing it in until that outer piece hits the one inch mark. This is the one inch mark right there. Just tap it in a little bit more, and that's lock it down. That's where we want that cut to be. So what that's going to do is it's going to cut in one inch from this guard. Now that I have the dado blade set up, we're going to do the first cuts 
on the cross pieces to begin with, and then we'll take a look at how it looks. One more thing that I neglected to mention when I was talking about the dado blade is you're going to see me using the fence with the miter gauge. Normally we wouldn't want to do that. If you're cross cutting a board and you're using the miter gauge and the fence at the same time, that's a recipe for kickback. So you don't normally want to do that. What I'm doing right now, because I'm doing a dado cut, I'm not doing a cross cut. It's not going to completely cut through the board and so that's why I'm using the miter gauge and the fence at the same time. Taking a quick look at how we're how we've done here, there's the rabbit cut. You can see uh, it doesn't look real smooth in here, but it's going to be covered. I am going to sand that down a little bit to make it a little bit more smooth. But just taking a look at how we did, this is halfway done. We've got the first part of the cut right here. And on this board here, so it's going to look a little bit like that. That's halfway done. You can see there it's resting in on that joint. That's what that joint's going to look like. Now we have to cut into this board the same way so that they match up. I've set my guard here to make sure that I am not going to be cutting into that piece. This piece that we're looking at here is the face of the door. We want to make sure we don't mess it up. The other thing that I'm going to be doing with this is testing it on a piece of scrap board just to make sure that the cut that I make isn't going to cut too far into my final piece. So after making that test cut, I've decided to change my design a little bit. What I end up doing here, as you can see here, there's a curve to that dado blade and it's just going to be a pain to try to chisel that out. So what I've decided to do instead is change my design and I'm going to go all the way across. You can see here what I was planning to do with the original design was to come part way across on both sides and make it look like this. The way that I've changed it is I've decided instead of doing that to come all the way across like this. What that means though is that these boards that I cut to 10 inches and 7 eighths means that they're too short. Because if I go all the way across, that means that the width of this door will all of a sudden become 10 and 7 eighths inches wide and I need it to be 13 and 7 eighths inches wide. So these pieces that I just cut are pretty much a waste at this point if I'm going to change the design. So I'm going to change it. I have enough wood to change it and so I'm going to change it and I'm going to cut new pieces. These pieces will now be 13 and 7 eighths inches wide and they're going to come all the way across. What that's going to allow me to do is instead of trying to fiddle around and figure out how to cut or chisel this piece out, I can just do a dado cut all the way across and that'll make it a lot easier on myself. And here's that final product. We've got the long piece here with the cut and you can see it's a little bit jagged and I'll fix that with some sandpaper. And then the short piece here, which is the 13 inch, almost 14 inch long piece. And that'll fit right in there like that. All right, so the doors are pretty much done. I haven't glued them up quite yet. I just did a rough clamping here to make sure that everything lined up like I wanted to. I can see I've got a little lip here that I'm gonna have to sand down, but that's okay. <clears throat> a little bit on this edge too. Checked it to make sure the measurements are all right. So what I'm going to do next is take these clamps off. I'm going to spread some glue down on there, glue it down, clamp it down overnight. And so we are all done with the doors for the front side of the doors at least.